Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting Thursday, June 13th, 2000. Oh, it's Wednesday, June 13th, 2018 at 7.03 in the municipal offices here in Deerfield. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Would you all please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the first thing on our agenda is to speak about the motions for the special town meeting on June 25th. Do you want me to read those? Oh, sure. Okay. Um, this will be for... This will be for our special town meeting um, on June 25th. Um, let's see. So, and we're hoping all of this pulls together by then. But um, motion one: I move the town vote to apply the proceeds from the sale of land consisting of approximately 2.87 acres, more or less, shown as partial C on the subdivision not required plan of land in Deerfield, Massachusetts, prepared for the town of Deerfield by Harold L. Eaton and Associates, Inc., Hadley, Massachusetts, September 30th, 2016, as recorded in the Franklin County Register of Deeds, Plan Book 140, Plan 41, to the indebtedness uh, incurred in inquiring such parcels of land in accordance with General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 63. So if, if this doesn't follow it doesn't come through by that time do we just not right do we, we, we would just um, pass pass over it pass over it yeah the, the reason we put it in is because hopefully we then we could do it all a in separate one shot. town meeting <clears throat> just for this two hundred thousand yep. dollars and the, the last but we do have to have this town meeting by the you know right to handle the um natural bakers three hundred and fifty seven thousand yep. it's been about uh, a week since i spoke with them and, and they're hopeful that it will uh, take place. There's just there's a lot of ducks for them I'm to get sure. in a row. So great. Um, well, yep. That'd be wonderful. Hopefully that will work out. So the second motion is for the uh, property um, at the old Oxford site, which is, you know, uh, will be for the New England Natural Bakers. So motion to I move the town vote to apply the proceeds from the sale of land consisting of 9.2755 acres more or less shown as lot two on the subdivision not required plan of land in Deerfield, Massachusetts, prepared for the town of Deerfield by How uh, Harold L. Eaton and Association Associates, Inc., Hadley, Mass., September 30th, 2016, as recorded in the Franklin County Register of Deeds, Plan Book 140, Plan 41, to the indebtedness uh, incurred in inquiring such parcels of land in accordance with General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 63. Good, great. The uh, next motion will be for um, our uh, sewer uh, special, um, it will be for our sewer study. Um, sewer uh, roadmap. A roadmap for our sewer study. Um, the motion three, I move the town vote to transfer from sewer special res, uh, res revenue reserves the sum of $74,600 to pay for the wastewater systems condition assessment and needs analysis project. And then um, motion four will be for the uh, repairing of the roof at the police station um, that's leaking now and needs some major remodeling. Um, so motion four, to see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash the sum of 48,000 for repairs to the police station roof. Um, and the last night, both the finance committee and the CIPC voted to um, recommend these articles. Move these forward? Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, the good. only thing, um, you know, I, I, I was in another meeting in Greenfield, so I was a few minutes late. Um, when we were doing the Prickett proposal, um, I was just wondering, if we can talk to him about getting um, it done by Thanksgiving. He said he was gonna do it, try to get it done by December. Not that it would be a huge issue, but it would just be nice if we had it Thanksgiving because then we'd have the week um, after Thanksgiving for us to um, discuss it and then figure out what we wanted to do and put something in as sewer commissioners to the 
CIPC, which is December, due December 1st. So it would give us a little bit of time yeah. to even prioritize, even if, even if you could get a portion of some of yeah. that done so we well, could know, like we I, wanted to focus mainly yeah. on. So, I mean, it was my fault I was late, but I wanted to bring that up because mm -hmm. I, I, the whole point of the, is the, you know, the timing. Um, mm -hmm. And so if we could get at least some information by Thanksgiving. So we have that week. We usually meet because I don't like to cook. On <laughs> <laughs> I got to cook on Wednesday. No, I do like to cook, but I have to cook on Wednesday nights. So we don't yeah, we, usually we meet. We usually don't have a We don't meet that. on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, so we meet before the week before and the week after. So yep. I was hoping for our Wednesday meeting the week after we could have it so that we can make some decisions and or at least talk about it. Yeah so that we have an idea of what we want to afford. It's not that we can't amend it later mm -hmm. in the month, you but know, at least in the next month, but... At least we have something on their schedule. We need to put something in as a placeholder. Yep. And, and we need to have an idea of what it would be and what we're going to do. Okay. Yeah. Does um, that seem right? Does no, that, that seem okay? It's fine with me. I, I think the <clears throat> sooner we can get this going, uh, the better. I, I still just... I, I got to just say that I'm... I'm, I'm uneasy with the, the whole process because this is the fourth study that we've done, and I don't think the results are going to be any different. I, and, and well, do Kip, you remember? Yeah, I well, I, I know you feel uneasy, but this, what is different, and this is what I told everyone last night, the reason why this is so important is this, number one, clarifies if what, what are the safety issues? Does a current survey for safety issues? So we need to address safety issues in both places. But then what it is, is it gives us a priority map of, of what we have to do and, and how we can phase it out and how we can phase in our financing. How can we finance this? And, and if you remember, remember what Orange did. Orange, and, and Diana can bring that up, Orange had is almost identical plant, almost identical age, similar capacity like to our South Deerfield one. They had over $20 million, wasn't it? Yeah. Over $20 million estimate, mm -hmm. but they ended up with was, was like 12 million, 200 and something, mm -hmm. something like By that. By going through this process. By right. going through this process, you pared it down right. and you also did it in phases so it became affordable. That's right. and, and what you're doing is you're having a roadmap so we are making the correct investment but also, this gives us the formal game plan that how you go and get money. Right. Uh, you can't, if you start just, okay, we, know, we all know we need to do the head works. And the clarifier. But if, if we go out and look for money, people are going to say, well, where's your documentation? Where, what, what, what are you using as, um, wh wh how, who says you have to have this? You know, okay. so this what this does is it documents everything. Mm -hmm. It gives you a road map, and it gives you the stuff you have to do, because otherwise you're not going to be in compliance, or you're going to have a failure, or whatever. And you're certainly taking care of your safety issues, and then you can have, and it gives you a game plan on how are you going to pay for this. Well, in I believe it was in 2015, um, the select board authorized the, the exact. Same the exact same thing and uh, when I first came here I I read through that plan and it did it was quite specific as to the safety issues in both the plants it was also uh, it went further it called for a design phase for headworks at the South Deerfield plant but it also talked about infrastructure and gave us several different options of what to do and it came with an estimated price tag of about 32 million dollars and I think that's where the sewer study committee started picking up, is we were trying to prioritize, you know, what were we going to tackle first? Uh, there was also an extensive, um, I'm not sure what you want to call it, a rate study uh, from Dave Prickett uh, as far as to how to go about, you know, charging this. And we've all discussed this in the past. You know, there's a lot of different ways. But the bottom line is I think we decided as a board to, you know, if we needed to raise uh, seven hundred thousand dollars and we only had eight hundred users uh, that the fairest way was by water consumption uh, there were a lot of different uh, options on the table but they became more complicated for our town to administer too and we tried to look into other avenues for that and here again it, 
it would probably have involved hiring another person just to deal with that. So then we would have raised the sewer rates to offset the expense of that, you know, additional personnel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and like I said, I don't have a problem because I want this thing to go forward and it's been studied to death. I just really feel that we're going to get a lot of the same stuff. But as long as we move forward, I guess it's good. I'm sure we are, except that we're not going to get the $32 million price tag because oh. that's not what we're going to do. Oh, no. And, and I get that. But I, I, we could have picked and choose from the last study what we wanted to do. And when the sewer study committee got into it, that's where it all kind of came back to a head because there was no real consensus as to what part to pick. And, okay. and that's why we're actually paying for a professional so we can make, hopefully, the best decision possible. And well, well, we, did, we did pay them. They were Weston Sampson and Dave Prickett before. But I, I, just, I just wanted I, to say that. But yeah. I understand I, it's your just frustration. That, yeah. yeah it, well, it, it's, it's the kind of things that we, I feel as a group, we knew, you know, what needed to get done. But it was like, you know, what needed to get done first? You know, it's, you know do, you get, do you buy the horse or do you buy the cart? You know, and, and it seemed pretty clear to me, but, you know, it, it, it didn't work out that way. Okay, let's move on. Um, the one-day wine and malt license, June 23rd for the Holy Family Parish. I move that we um, uh, vote to approve the Section 14 one-day liquor permit for um, June 23rd for the Holy Family Parish. Second. And we also um, waive the fee. Second. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want to take a moment? We'll sign this right now. Yep. Sure. It has. Can you get back to that? Sure. I do. I do. Absolutely. If you wouldn't mind. I'm going to, um, let me just sign this here sure. real quick. <coughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming. That's really nice. So I, I wanted to welcome uh, Christina Johnson. Um, she's uh, Come on up, okay. have a seat. Yes, um, she's um, accepted the position as our new uh, senior center director, um, and hopefully starting, um, I guess after the week of June twenty seventh or in that range. Yeah, in that range, once everything kind of works out. So, um, so welcome. We're so excited oh, to have you. Thank you. I'm very excited too. So thank I met you, you before. So I'm yes. Trevor McDaniel, and um, I'm Kip Camosa, and I'm Carolyn Ness. And so. and your roles? We we We're are the select, select board. board. Yep. Of Deerfield. Of Deerfield. Yep. South Deerfield. Yep. Hey, you might so know I, that, but yeah. just in case. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and she'll you know she'll be running the, our senior center, which covers obviously yep. uh, Waitley and right. Sunderland too. So we're really right. excited to have you, and we just wanted oh, to welcome you, you to much. town. And no, I'm very excited too to to start and um, really get in and meet and meet everybody. Yeah. And I have hopefully great, you know, great ideas that can be implemented. So. Yeah, we have a lot, a lot going on yes, and a lot of a lot changes. Going on. And, and we know, we, we talked before, but, right. um, and hopefully um, Diane Cornwall will help, you know, help uh, yeah, guide you Diane as well. Is, she's been wonderful. Yes, and yeah, she I know is. you met her already, too. Yes, so, yes. Um, yeah, she's great. And, she's, she, and she, um, I just talked to her, not uh, met with her last week, and she's going to um, do the grant for the next Make yeah, sure that two, is it the two, three? Ah, okay. So you don't have to worry about it because it's like the first week in July. I know it's oh, too so early, July like right, right at this time crunch. Yeah, right. so, so yeah. you don't actually have to do it because there was some a little bit of a problem with that. So she's got it straightened oh, okay. out, and yeah, hopefully it'll go hard. forward. And, and so that know. will get funding. <laughs> yes, from it's a two year cycle, right? So yes, that you don't have to worry about that. But she's got some good processes and some good 
information on other grants that you may be able to apply for. Yeah, she, she's been very helpful so yeah. far. So. Yeah, and her oh, assessment yeah. will be done, you know, hopefully a little after June. And I know it might stretch a little bit more with all the stuff we're adding, <laughs> adding to her in the meantime with, without right. having a director. But um, right. so it's, it's going to be, it's an exciting time. And yeah, I'm really excited absolutely. to have you. And, oh, great. Um, no, it'll be great. Happy to hear that. Yeah. So thanks well, for coming thank, in tonight. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> nice yeah. to meet you. If you need anything, I'm just yeah, Come let us know. Listen. We're always we'll around. We'll probably see Trevor over there more right. than us. But, right. Oh, that's great yeah. to know. Thank right, you great. so Thank much. You. I Welcome. look forward to getting to know you better. Yeah, Thank sounds you. good. Thanks for being us. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Right. It's a relief to know that we have someone. Thank you. Oh, it is. <laughs> I'm getting that feeling. Sue <laughs> so, so Corey's really excited. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our next item on our agenda is to review and sign an MOU with the Franklin County Solid Waste District. Um, uh, I make a motion to recommend the um, we sign the MOU with the Solid Waste District. Um, and we do this on a regular basis, and um, they are they are really uh, Jim yeah, I mean, right. it just does an amazing job for us. Mm -hmm. um, the rates for um, everything is is attached. Doesn't look like we're getting a lot of the waste. I, I guess the metal went down a little bit per haul. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Nope. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You need a signature from just you. Nope. No, no, all of us. Okay. Has reviewed that and has oh, money good. in his budget. Do we ever have any further discussion about the scrap metal as far as just taking it ourselves versus paying? Um, I don't remember. We get, well, I mean, we, we get a check, but um, that's that's what they charge us to haul it. Right. And then we get the check at the you know at the end. But I know is it worth um, it sometimes? I don't I don't know. Has the has the has value gone, been it going the down? Value has gone down, down a little bit. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I know for a while people were driving around with things that steel on the back of their truck. Yeah. To, but I think it's gone down again. It might go up again because of steel tariffs. That's like true. That. that is true. So that's that. I don't there's know. Really data. Do oh, there's two the originals. Yeah. Is there, oh, yep. Yeah, there's one more here. Next item on our agenda is a request for comments from the planning board uh, to deal with Dollar General. Uh, I think we'll take this under advisement and uh, send it off to them in the future. Is that? Um, yeah, yeah. Let Wendy, uh, Diane. How about let Wendy collect the um, comments this week? Or uh, well, your your the hearing is on July second. Right. So, so we have are next week. Actually, to, we have another week. Uh, so you want to put it on your next agenda to, mm -hmm. to vote collectively oh, as yeah, a board a good, to send yeah. the comments or whatever okay. comments you decide? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Why don't we do that? Because we do have a meeting before the, um, their meeting. That is the 20th. 25th. Oh, actually, that's the 27th. Your, t your special meetings on Monday the 25th, yep. but you have a regular meeting mm -hmm. on the 27th. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, the next item is our public participation policy, the first meeting. Um, this was, yeah. I would, can I, I take thought, a second? I thought just, we, um, we did look at this before. Yeah, we, we've, we've looked at it before, I think. I, I think it's fine. Do you want to vote on it? I'll make the official policy. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine yeah. with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Can, yeah, can I just take one oh, second? Yeah, I just want to look at it real quick again. Um, I think this is based on the one um, 
I think we got it from Levert. Yes. And then we made, it, made a couple tweaks to it. Uh, Wendy was going to un put, print it on the back of our agenda. So yeah, it's, people can. Which was, I think was a good that's idea. That's a great idea yeah. for people to be able to read when mm -hmm. they can speak, how, you know, all of that, and encourage them to talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. If you okay, I make a motion that we approve the public participation. Second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, on Kelleher Drive, uh, I just wanted to um, say that. I looked through all the all the different programs, and I think the best bet for that, unless we have a, a real big event um, that we can use the emergency watershed protection money under NRCS, that we update our MVP program for the Kelleher Drive one. And Wendy is going to um, see Katie that runs the program tomorrow, and um, we're just going to verify how do we update our program. And this is just for that culvert that's on the side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. uh, well, if we up if we upgrade the culvert, then we have to upgrade the little bridge that goes, you know, it's out on North Main Street. But one step at a time. That's a different program, and that already has a waiting list. So. Right. And well, there's not an issue as much as with the culvert that was under uh, Kelleher Drive. Right. Well, there's already sinkholes coming through right. a little, so it. It is in failure, and if we have an event, then we can. Um, it doesn't need to be yes. declared event. We can then use it under EWP. Any way that we can coordinate doing some ditch cleaning behind Kelleher Drive? Well, that was. Our, well, I was. Um, I did get an appointment as a commissioner for the Mosquito District. We have our only our first meeting on. Uh, the 22nd okay. so we're going to organize and I, I honestly have not done the research to find out and and part of our deal is that we would visit other mosquito districts to find out how they operate and mm -hmm. th that was when I was going to follow up on the wetlands cleaning out of the wetlands and stuff like that what do we have to I do I think it's a good idea though so the really idea is so I mean that was always there. The idea was to clean out Bloody Brook, and there's a, lot, there's a ditch system behind Kelleher Drive even, as well. Even over by the school here, there's probably like five trees in front of the culvert. I know. I mean, and it's just it's in bad shape. It's not that you are completely exempt from the wetlands exemptions, but you you can work in the wetlands. And we right. have, and, and, and as a matter of fact, because we are, are transitioning from VDCI doing our collections, you know, Vector Disease mm -hmm. Control Inc., which is what we hired, and this. Mosquito State. District, which we aren't up and running, the Department of Public Health has volunteered to, we begged and they said yes, that they would do the trapping and testing, which normally wouldn't start until July. So they're already, this week, they started Monday. Yep. We'll have our first test today, it should come out today. Mm -hmm. But um, they're trapping at the same sites that VDCI did, and then they're going to do some analysis on the GPS mapping and maybe do some a little different. But. So we're not going to know about ditch cleaning. Well, no, because you need to, you need to have. Uh, well, we we do know know that there is West Nile disease already, um, two years running. So it should show up. I mean, we've had it's fairly wet weather, so it should show up sometime in July or August. So we could check again and by then, the time we do this. And then we'll culvert. be organized enough. Great. Okay. And it was always my intention to do that. So we'll we'll have some information. All right. We'll, we'll update our MVP program. We'll organize the Mosquito District, and we'll figure out, because obviously the Mosquito District will write a letter of support okay. that we do this. All right. And we'll our, All right, our next it. item, we'll do the appointments for fiscal year 19 for boards and committees. Can we read those again, or do you, do you want to do it, or how do you? All right. Hit them again. So <clears throat> these are appointments June 13th for uh, terms expiring 
well, different times. So I'll, I'll go through each one. So this is the ADA coordinator. Um, this is an annual, and the term expires 2019, for term 2019. For our ADA coordinator, it would be Kevin H. Scarborough. Um, this is the next one would be the Agricultural Commission, and this is a staggered three year. So 2019 would be Thomas G. Clark. Uh, 2020 would be Stephen D. Taylor. Also 2020 would be Jacob Jep Molinar. Uh, 2021 would be Jay Savage. And 2022 would be Francis G. Sobieski. I, I just want to mention mm -hmm. um, the new appointment on that list is uh, Mr. Molinaire. Mm -hmm. um, the other members are already appointed, but they were all um, they weren't staggered terms. Gotcha. So we've just basically staggered the terms and created new expiration dates. That's so perfect. that's why we've put them all on there. Thank you. Uh, Board of Health Agents. This is annual for uh, FY 2019. Um, Richard J. Kalaszewski. Uh, Charles uh, Kanicki was a special health agent. Kevin H. Scarborough. Zachary Smith and David Zamoyski. Uh, building Commissioner is an annual for 2019 is Kyle Scott. Uh, burial Agent will be uh, for 2019 will be Barbara J. Hancock. The Bylaws Review Advisory Committee, um, this is annual 2019, will be uh, Judith Cond Condrell. And Bruce St. Peter's is the chair. Wendy Foxman is ex officio non voting. Barbara Hancock is ex officio non-voting. And then we have three vacancies. So if anybody would like to step up and work on the bylaws um, review advisory committee, that would be wonderful. Uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee. These are all a one-year um, appointment for FY 2019. And uh, Wendy Foxman is the ex officio non-voting. Carolyn Shores Ness will be the select board rep. Barbara Hancock. Uh, ex officio non-voting. So um, these other openings are appointments <clears throat> made by the board. Well, there's two moderator appointments, yep. but then there's four appointments that are made by the select board, but they're representative of, of those the school boards. Committee. Yep. So we I don't know. We weren't sure in the past if the if those boards had made recommendations to you. What or they what do is they, they submit say. it to us. They submit it to us, and then we would. I can I can say when when I just at least speaking for the school committee um, when we consolidated. Ken, said, yeah. uh, Ken Cutterback was also voted in at our school committee for for the rep to the capital improvement. So I Great. I know that one for sure. Great. The others I I'm not aware of, and I don't have them on my list. Well, I don't think um, I don't think planning board has. Um, uh, Skip no uh, Skip Sobieski was. So we can, we can do Skip Sobieski and Ken for the planning board. Okay. Yeah. So Ken, I um, no, no, Ken Cutterback was yep. for the school committee, and Skip Sobieski said he was um, renominated by the board of assessors. Board of assessors. We okay. do not have the finance committee or the planning board persons, so we'll have to do those at a Next later week. date. Okay. So Ken Cutterback for school committee rep and Skip Sobieski for board of assessors. Yeah. Um, and then, um, do you know who the planning board rep was? Did you, well, to, did you do it, Rachel again? It was Rachel, but mm -hmm. I, we were going, someone had just wanted to bring it up. Should we have the same people doing all the different boards? So it's I, just whoever wants to do it. I think. Okay. I, I don't well, know. It's I, also I don't remember. up to the planning we'll board. Again. It's up to yes. the board, too, yeah. that, I mean, you, right. you can have discussion among that, the planning sure. board, yeah. to make okay. those decisions. Yeah, it's the planning yep. board that makes the decision. Okay, so we'll wait on the finance and the planning board. Okay. Um, the Community Preservation Committee, these are 2019 annual appointments. Right now, we're, um, Rachel Blaine is appointed by the select board. Again, um, I'm not sure about the town moderator, historical commission, planning board, board of assessors, Open right. Space Committee, Recreation Committee, and Conservation Commission. So we'll wait to hear from right. them who they're pushing forward. Um, the Conservation uh, Commission, this is a three-year um, staggered appointment. And for a position ending 2021, we're appointing William R. Maripisi, which will be a new appointment to the Conservation Commission. Then there's a vacancy. So we really encourage people, if they'd like to get involved with the Conservation Commission um, would be wonderful. So please, please step forward. 
there are currently three members on the board now. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, and um, Bill will be the fourth. Is it a five-member board? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, this is for the Cultural Council, and this is a staggered two-year appointment for FY 2019 is uh, Candace Bradbury Carlin, a new one-year term, um, and the rest are for 2020. Um, and we have Julie Cavaco, who's the chair, um, new and final uh, term year, final year term or something. Correct. Well, they can yes. only have two years, and then they have gotcha. to get off. And oh, it's not correct? Then, oh, that's not correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your final you term? Um, no, um, the, not everyone's for 2020. There was a staggering. Oh, there was. Oh, we don't do have you know that. that? Do you know that? I, I do because I emailed, Wonderful. I emailed Pat. But, <laughs> You're shaking um, your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, Grab it by the throat. Thank you for doing this, Julie. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Well, I'm looking. I can tell you that the... Uh, the Cultural Council gets about five thousand dollars from the state, and we get applications every. Oh yeah, should I? Please, thank um, you. The Cultural Council gets about five thousand dollars plus or minus from the state every year, and we receive about twenty, twenty, thirty applications for events. Um, we supported the uh, senior picnic, um, the Thanks Friday night year. frolics. Often That's are really part nice. are that um, the. The events that they have at the school, mm -hmm. um, this coming, the 17th, there's going to be a performance up on Sugarloaf by um, yeah. I, uh, Connecticut. Yes. Well, yeah. Yep. So between like six and eight, o'clock. Uh, uh, yep. They're um, yep. they're paddling down from Turner's Falls, and then they're going to walk up, and the concert will be at six to eight. It's not a combined walk up and down, um, but it is an event. How that's wonderful! Being that's on, really so. great. Yeah. So there's yeah. some really great yeah. events. Often we support the library. There's a book yep. talk we're supporting. Um, things like that. Great. Okay, so um, what, as I understand it, uh, Jack Cavaco's term will be ending on uh, six nineteen, along with Olivia Leone. Wait, uh, let's see, because I don't have those on my list. Uh, no, I, these may only be the people that are for right the twenty. Like I, I'm not sure what. How large is your council? Be up to Looks like, like it's eight. Oh, it can be eight. okay. I yeah. didn't realize that. Okay, so I think we're just well, nominating I'll the ones. What I have right now. Perfect. I have Thank Julie you. Julie Cavaco, um, and then uh, Roberta uh, La, La, Bar La Barbara. La Barbara. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Marapisi. Yeah. Uh, John Altman. Yeah. Uh, Piper Pichette is the secretary. Uh, Carol uh, Mc McBurney. Yeah. Um, and Kate Lawless is new. Yes. Wonderful. She volunteered, and she's had experience in other um, cultural councils, so it was a natural. And I think that's, that's all I have for the 2020 versus right. that, you I know, guess it's, Candace was 20. Yeah, it's heavy on one end, and so yeah. I misinterpreted that. That's but, okay. Right. Yeah. right, so the others are not. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you. it sounds like it's going to be a, a great. And um, I had encouraged, I think, and I want to tell you this too, Kip. I can't remember what it was about, but... Um, People in town, oh. individuals are allowed to submit applications for grants, and um, so if if the board of selectmen wanted to provide an event in town, um, like for instance, we've got the uh, parade that's coming up. Yes. Um, yep. If that had been planned ahead of time, if we had known, right. an application could have been made, and so um, we could a, have had some a funds certain amount paint, of the funds could go towards su supporting that event. That's great. Mm. We'd love cool. to do that. It's a, it's a, a quiet committee, um, but it does add some nice um, culture and Absolutely. And it does fun to stuff. Town. Yeah, fun yeah, stuff. We, good. I mean, we had a great time last was, weekend. I mean, we, just a bunch of people got together and we painted signs for the float. Yeah. And so it was the a signs great, are really you know, A lot cute. of kids yeah. came and they did their paintings. Yeah. And so. Happy birthday, Sunderland. Yes, we yeah. can't wait. I'll mention okay. that a little bit later, too. So, right. Thank uh, you. The cultural resource officer is a 2019 appointment, is David Driver. And um, emergency management director, this is annual for 2019, is uh, Lori McComb would be the director. Uh, John uh, Pachurik Jr., assistant director, and Zach Smith is assistant director. Emergency 911 coordinator is uh, Darren Melnick, is interim, and William Swayze. These are both 2019 annual appointments. Um, 
the Energy Resource Committee, Resources Committee is an annual 2019. We have um, Lori uh, Lusada, Irene H. Clancy, Stephen Eifer, or I guess Eifer, um, Greg uh, Franceschi, uh, David B. Gilbert Keith, J. Stryker, J. W. Stryker, M. A. Sweetland, and Stephen C. Uh, uh, Sabata. So fence viewers, we have uh, 2019, we have Albert Olmsted, and there's a vacancy, so if anyone would like to view fences. Um, <laughs> then we have uh, Forest Wardens um, for annual appointment 2019, Darren Melnick, uh, William J. Swayze, and Kevin H. Scarborough. Franklin County Solid Waste Management District Rep uh, for 2019 is Irene Clancy and M.A. Swedland. Uh, Franklin County Transit Authority representative, um, again this year for 2019, would be Robert J. Decker III. Um, Franklin County, uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments rep is for 2019 would be Carolyn uh, Shores Ness and Wendy Foxman, alternate. And the FERCOG electric, uh, Electricity Aggregation Project 2019 would be David Gilbert Keith and Steve, Steve Iper. I hope I have his name right, Eper, Iper. Um, gas and plumbing inspector uh, for those, 2019. Those are actually appointed by the building commissioner. These are appointed by the building commissioner, which is Stephen uh, B. Ber uh, Baranowski and Jason Wallace is the alternate. Historical commission, staggered three year for a term ending in 2021 is uh, Kenneth uh, Schoen for the historical commission. Keeper of the cemetery maps, um, annual appointment 2019 would be Kevin H. Scarborough. Keeper of the Town Clock 2019, Robert uh, J. Wamet, Willette. Um, local Census Director for 2019 is Barbara J. Hancock. Um, open Space Committee, uh, Select Board appoints three of the five members and moderator appoints two of the five members. This is a staggered three year. Uh, 2018 was John L. Nur. I don't know if the K is. Uh, yeah, so Knur, so, maybe. Uh, 2019 would be uh, Corinne A. Dugas, Lynn Faith Rose. 2019 would be Alan C. Swedland, and there is a vacancy. So, open space committee, if somebody would like to, um, would like to be involved, please let us know. Recreation Committee. <clears throat> These are annual 2019 appointments. Robert J. Ackerman is chair. Uh, Beth Brown, Jeff Galley, Charles R. Knight, Rod uh, Rodney B. Warnick, Rebecca J. Zoli, and Eileen Skrbisky Bannock. The Register of Voters would be uh, all, all 2019 annual appointments. Joanne M. Carney, Barbara J. Hancock, Patricia A. Kroll and William H. Lino, representative to the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans District, District would be Joanne Carney for a 2019 appointment. <laughs> SCEMS Board of Oversight, uh, fiscal agent, this is for FY 2019, Carolyn Shores Ness, fiscal agent, Henry Camosa member, Trevor D. McDaniel member. Question marks. Question marks. <laughs> These are all question marks. <laughs> These are all question marks. <laughs> so, um, we'll keep going. You tell us. <laughs> well, we're still going for a bit, but um, I'm, I'm thinking we want some representatives to step forward, I think. Um, that was, uh, sewer, uh, sewer Study Committee. This is uh, for 2000. These are, I guess, uh, several staggered. So for 2019, so, go ahead. Yeah, so I just want to, yeah, I just want to make a comment about a couple of these things. So mm -hmm. some of these, the, you know, there's some question marks and italics. Um, yep. We're trying to locate the, or what I've been trying to do is research the, um, the, uh, the authority basically for these mm -hmm. boards and committees, whether it's in your bylaw or a town meeting vote or, or you've created a, uh, just created the committee. Like basically yep. when you created it, you identified a charge or a mission yep. of that committee. Um, so we've been, and, and also those determine generally when the, how the appointments work as well. Sure. So some of them I have been, we, I haven't located. So if right. I, if I don't know for certain, some of the things are still, 
any yep. you know questions that we're trying to well identify. while we're on the sewer <laughs> study committee, so the sewer study committee yeah that's one that we just voted uh, as a board to okay. get a group of guys together to, to speak on this so. when you did that kept do you recall did you cool. did you sort of set out you know a, a charge they, yeah. they did have a charge a, okay. they, they they do you charge. remember when around that was like what it time was period? 22 months ago I think, right? Okay. It was That's July. Close no, enough. I think it was in July of 16. I think you're right about that. I think it's July of 16. Okay. All right. Yeah. I can go back and, well, and do more research on that ago. if I, if that I know more. Give or take a month. More particularly. I hope you find that. Okay. Because I, I think in my book I have that it. Going okay. to what I spoke to earlier, that's why we, we spoke about it because there was, it was such a big, um, you know, uh, chores to select, you know, what's the most important thing to do. So, yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to so, I'm trying to collect all that so we can sort of have that information with every board and committee, both to tell people what the board or committee does, yep. um, but also just to help us keep better uh, track of sure, sure. Things. Um, Sorry. So I'll I'll read these. Um, John N. Davy, uh, Robert J. Decker the third, Keith uh, Millen, which is the ex officio non voting, John Paturic Senior. There was a question mark. This was 2018. Um, whether he's continuing. Mm -hmm. um, 2019 is Kevin Scarborough, ex officio non-voting. Um, 2019 is uh, Joshua Shemo. Uh, 2019 is Bruce St. Peter's, who's the chair. And 2018 is Jeff A. Upton, just unsure if he's still wanting to be involved with that. Right. So, yes, um, I, I understand it's an ad hoc, so there's no specific number yeah. of people. Yep. If, you, if you should find that either of those uh, folks don't want to do the same more. Other people have asked me or shown interest on it, so I'll just oh, pass it on to you. Okay. Yeah, please Excellent. pass it on. Okay. Yep. Uh, surveyor of Lumber and Wood is Kevin, his annual appointment 2019 is Kevin H. Scarborough. This, what do they do? do you survey uh, or if wood? We, if we um, decide to log the uh, memorial land. forest, then he would be able to. You, wouldn't yeah, you need a worth, wouldn't right. you need a state forester to do yes you need a forest plan. management plan yeah. but this is before they had forest management plans this is an old so superintendent public from the works couple hundred year old title okay the superintendent public works operations is annual appointment of 2019 is kevin h scarborough <laughs> swim program committee for 2019 be judith m bardwell and bethany l foley and there is a vacancy so if somebody out there would like to get involved with the swim program committee would love love that help uh, tree warden and moth superintendent is also kevin h scarborough for 2019 town clerk treasurer collector 2019 barbara h hancock uh, town council for 2019 is mead uh, tallerman and costa llc town memorial forest committee all that, vacant uh well that usually is the select board but yeah, since we don't even know where the town forest is, we left I, it blank. I, I think did we some, have some research work to do on, there. The, on town forest committees, and there are other towns that do have them. I wasn't sure if Memorial Forest was an actual location or whether you were just yeah, saying. Yes, it's up on Pine Oak. Oh, okay. Right. Because generally what they do, what tree committees do, is they work with the tree warden. And if you have a tree tree committee, which you do have some tree activity mm -hmm. going on, we, and they kind of just coordinate all of that. So you make sure, like, if you're taking down trees in one area, maybe you're planting planting trees in another area, things We'd like love that. some help so, there. Um, we were hoping that someone Just will step forward forested. that would right. um, <laughs> have an interest and would pursue a forest management plan because we It'd be keep, great. keep it saying be that we some, need that. You might be able to coalesce that with that tree inventory group mm -hmm. that's been working in Washington. Right, to, and there's, yeah. there's also like a great to know. put some trees in somewhere, is that right? Right. Well, well uh, I know that's a separate thing, but like a yeah, we, we have ten trees. trees on that grant that we should, and, and we want to tra plant trees. We have uh, doing the tree inventory was important because it it showed that on the most part our tree trees town trees are in good health, mm -hmm. but the problem is we have a, a high percentage of maples and mm -hmm. red maples, sugar maples, um, and they do not have a lot of resiliency or they're not as resilient going forward in the future for, with climate change. So we got, we have 10 oaks to plant and we need to plant more oaks in town. And that's really. Can we still keep some maple? Cause that feels like it's. 
We're I know, gonna, I know. We, it's we're not that gonna we're going to cut down the big We're just diversifying your we're trees. Just di yeah, we're, we're adding right. a little diversity. All right, I'm open for diversification. You have to do that. And we need to focus to on a little bit of oaks here and there. I've, I've got a few at my house you can have. The, the, the maple trees are kind of resilient because, I mean, they're the ones that are surviving more often. The oak trees seem to be targeted by the moths more often. <laughs> Uh, well, no, the sugar maples actually are dying, but yeah. whatever. All right. So, um, vacant, vacant town memorial forest committee. I have, the, I have the inventory committee. report for you that okay. will give you all the details. I won't okay. go into it right now. Uh, Tritown Beach Commission. This is staggered three year. These are the 2020 appointments for, oh, I think I said this already. Uh, Judith Bardwell. Oh, no, I no, guess they're, did, they're both on the same. Right? Gotcha. Exactly. So, Tritown Beach Commission. This is Judith uh, Bardwell and Bethany Foley. It's and there's also only, a vacancy. Right. And these are just Deerfield representatives, and there is only two towns now. So it's really a, a two town, not a It's Waitley and, <laughs> Waitley and Deerfield. <laughs> so no one doesn't? So um, no one never has. It just, we oh. just never changed the date. I mean, the name. <laughs> Veterans Grave Officers, John L. Sis for 2019. 2019 Wiring Inspectors uh, will be uh, Wayne Shaw. This is appointed by the Building Commissioner. Workers' Compensation Agent, Unemployment Compensation Agent would be, um, for 2019, would be Barbara J. Hancock and Sarah M. Uh, Misson, and uh, is the assistant. And Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, 2021, would be uh, Catherine L. Felton, from alternate to full member. So that means we have an alternate position that is open. Right. Gotcha. Um, and um, I just want to add the birthday committee. Um, yes. We have right now the 350th birthday committee is Stan Adams, Jay Stryker, Peter Thomas, and Henrietta Cocut. Um, we ha have not, we didn't put a number on it, so anybody that's interested, they just need to um, contact our office. Yeah. We really want to get, get going rolling. after the Sunderland. People should go to the Sunderland events and. Um, observe just like we observed up in Conway and then Shelburne is also and then the idea is what what do we what was really fun what yeah. was really great what do we want to do um, how do we put our own stamp on stuff and I'm excited for it and um, we really want to celebrate all of 2022 for our 2023 birthday great so that means a lot like of planning plan. do, do we have the date it was incorporated do we know the date other than I don't think we. I mean, I'm sure we have it somewhere, but that's. I'm just curious. So. Um, okay, so motion to approve all of those. Yes. I'll make them a second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um. Under new business. Is there any new business that you want to speak of? Yeah, I uh, just, Kevin came up with a price of $70,702.44 seven, $70, was is the going price right now of oh. our street lights. Yes. So we needed to s vote to send it on to the Energy Committee for a recommendation. Or just uh, to have a look further, at it. Further investigation. <laughs> is it our place to get involved as far as what do we pay for electricity? No, I, the whole... Um, premise of buying these lights is so we can change them out to an LED, LED. that would be you know, save us money right. um, but you know I don't know what we pay for electricity now if we're going to spend seventy thousand dollars well that was why I was going to send it on to the energy committee so that they could they can give, study us it and give us a recommendation. recommendation as to um, how much money we would add. save yeah, what's the per <laughs> you know you take the purchase price sure. and then because right. we didn't have a purchase I mean we didn't know what what it was what, what Eversource was going to sell it to us, so um, they can take that seventy thousand. So, and, and then, you know, what are we going to save in electricity costs by switching over to L? You know, buying it and then switching the lights to LED because Eversource isn't going to. Um, can we get grants for it? Sure. Um, Diane has something to yeah. add. So a couple things. I am working with the Energy Committee on um, oh, a couple good. other projects. So if, if you feel inclined to send that forward. Um, but I, I know um, in doing research in another community that um, there are communities in Massachusetts that have negotiated a much better price per light. That's about $240 a light. Yeah. And there's some communities that have got them for a dollar. So wow. I'm just saying yeah. um, there's some negotiation to be had there. Right. So. Okay. 
Certainly yep. the Energy Committee could explore that. And then there's also the maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know a lot of towns are considering because they do want to change over to LED, but you still are going to be required to maintain those fixtures and whether you have the in-house capacity, you should examine that. That was why we and hesitated then, in the past. Right, mm -hmm. and then there are, you can get a contract with a company. There are towns that have gotten contracts with companies, but they can be up to, you know, 20,000 a year, right. depending on, you know, how many lights and the fixtures and that stuff. So besides just the conversion piece, you know, you want to There's explore no that. And you're still going to be on the hook for some costs. That's the other well, thing. A lot of times with these streetlight plans, you know, you end up still having to pay Eversource. They tell you in their note that they're still going to own still a lot of the, some of the poles. Right, yeah, a lot, a lot of, of the poles. poles. And um, sometimes there's just additional maintenance, so you just want to be cautious. About and perhaps the energy committee can work on this and, and report back to us. But mm -hmm. I'd like to see, you know, 12 months of energy costs for those lights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd like to see a proposal for the cost of the new lights and, um, you know, the types. And then we can kind of look and determine the maintenance mm -hmm. costs. I know that yeah. most of the LED lights will outlast any of the other ones by at least tenfold. Yeah. Um, and, and then we can make a, um, an educated uh, decision agree. based on the money that we might save right. and, and going forward. It makes sense mm -hmm. to me. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we, that was why we've always hesitated. Yeah. So, so. I, I would second that motion to move it forward to the Energy Committee with those okay. charges. Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the other uh, couple other items of the FERC deadline that was um, for June 18th has been moved to July 25th for um, that um, input, comments. yeah, the um, comments. So I'm working on that. Um, that was at that meeting that I was late mm -hmm. to the f um, last week. So last week to the um, sewer stuff. So yep. that we just got that extension. So I'll, I'll, I'm working on that letter, and we'll get it for our meeting, the next meeting on the end of the month or the first of the part of ju July. Also, um, I just I sent in a the conservation district sent in a pre proposal. I I don't know if we're gonna be invited to send in a full proposal. Um, it's in July, but it's for Stillwater Bridge area, Sunburn Beach up in um, Shelburne, and the Eunice Williams Bridge area in Greenfield. And the idea is to have um, meetings, public outreach meetings, and have some somebody come and survey. How do we, um, you have natural river banks that are eroding, so how do, how do we get those areas to um, be more resilient to the high volume of traffic? You know, what can we do? Um, what do we do about expenses like cleanup and policing and, mm -hmm. you know, There's just general over at, you know, use and what kind of policies we can have. And so the idea is to have some public meetings. It's just a small grant. It's only $35,000. So I don't know if we'll be, if we make mm -hmm. the cut, but it's sort of end of the year environmental kind of stuff. So we just threw it together last week and sent it in. And so I'm hoping Lori Busada was really great. She came, great. she did some pictures and um you know did a little talking to a couple different people like the people that run the fly shop and stuff yep. like that yep. and so we try to get some information yeah. yeah so that got sent in so we'll find Thank out you. if we actually get invited back and then we can vote to participate or not um i oh i met with um patty and brenda and we're working on you know the school foundation budget mm -hmm. i'm as far as I can tell, that uh, Senate bill that Adam Hines is putting forward, that's moving forward, that's Senate bill number 2525, is only related to health care costs and um, oh, the cost of um, uh, like special ed and stuff like that. So we can send a letter of support for that if you want, Trevor. Mm -hmm. um, we can vote to do that. The, when I, the, the most up-to-date information I have is that the other bill, the one that I was really wicked worried about, was um, the foundation budget um, that actually is being reviewed. And that, because that's about $500,000 difference mm. that is on the line for us. And so um, I, I think that the problem with that going forward, it's a little bit slower is because it, the state's going to have to com cough up a lot more money in general. So we have a little bit more time, and we're trying to narrow down 
um, it, whether it's a zip code problem, you know, with picking up part of Waitley and then that they count for us or whatever. So we're, tr we're sorting it out. And a lot of that money that they're hoping to put towards education is, would be coming from the, you know, fair share tax or that millionaire's right. tax, which is in front of the Supreme Court now. So a lot of that's still up in the air. We still want, if we have a problem, we want to identify that problem and we want Steve Kulik. He leaves in January. He's mm -hmm. willing to help us and we need to get that sorted out because he knows everybody and he knows everything. Mm -hmm. So we need to narrow down what we think it is and have him help us start it at least for the new person. So, because okay. um, that's a huge one amount other, of money for us to make up. One thing that I wanted to mention um, while we were just talking about some of this stuff was that uh, Wendy had talked, I think she had found maybe a, a resource for, I was to, Oh, we've, been the meeting, we've been meeting about the town common and yeah. trying to work yeah. on ideas for pathways to kind of actually that lead to a crosswalk. And um, we'll, Diane's working on, you know, getting our complete streets kind of together and get, getting that moving. So we really want to kind of get all this stuff figured out. But a big centerpiece is that fountain. I know. And it's planning to shut off in July. So we were kind of coming up with ideas of how do we recirculate the water so it's not a waste. Um, but then, you know, so our little committee, like Greg has been reaching out to Amherst, which has a fountain that they shut off in the winter and they, you know, clean out. So there's maintenance involved in that. And there's, you talked about this before, the cost of switching it over to a pump versus gravity fed or, you know, natural pressure fed. Um, I'm not sure how we communicate with the water department on how how like how to stop that i just hate to see that fountain shut well, off but i'm also concerned about water you know wasting water my, as well. my suggestion is we approach the water district and say if Give there's year, any maybe. kind of uh water drought or you know concern about the water usage then you know impacting you, you water that we would shut it off it, yeah but if if we have if if the water levels are okay then maybe we can just run it until we come up with a solution and say so that we we're are working, working on, on that solution yes. and and i think wendy had sent an email out today that she may have found a source of funding for a little bit of that so just wanted to mention that we're working on that and trying to find ways to keep that going so I, what I, was your know, thought, I, I was i had talked with the water department about that myself and they've been getting some pressure from the state. I so see. That's, that's where that's coming from. This from is wasting water. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, my personal thing on that is, uh, yeah, you can say that it's wasting water because it's going down the drain, but our reservoir has never been low. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a good, an adequate water supply. And if you think about it, it's really just nature taking itself. Circulating the water goes down through. to the river, the sunshine makes it evaporate, gets forms clouds, it rains, it you know, fills the reservoir, it just kind of goes round oh and round. Gosh, so you're getting into this, you're not, this economy <laughs> stuff. I learned that in second grade. <laughs> I, right. You know, it's it's not really wasting the water. If we had, I understand. Uh, if we were waste, if the water was going down the drain and we had to, you know, shut off water supply to residents or have, you know. Uh, obviously. obviously. I know, I know. Yeah, that's, that's a different why story. It, so, it is. Yeah. But I think it, we, it's a conversation has to go it's beyond the water department, has to go on with uh, DEP as well. Chilly. Where does the water go from the fountain? Does it go into the sewer? Goes no. No. Goes into the drain. Goes into the drain, which would then go out to the I think the brook, and then would kind of lead out towards the river. Is yeah. I haven't okay. quite mapped it yet, but I think that's where it goes. Okay. It doesn't. It, it's not processed by the sewer. Yeah. Well, no. I was thinking that actually, you know, how there's not enough water that goes into the sewer because everybody's low for toilets. That could yeah. almost be a plus. It sometimes. That's a moot point. Because. Yes, it is. <laughs> but good thought. Good thought. <laughs> okay. So, um, next, uh, do you have anything else? Nope. No, those are Trevor? my new business. Nope, nope. Okay. I'm good right now. Yep. Uh, the Pioneer Valley Antique Automobile Club Show, July 21st at 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Yankee Candle. We got a letter from uh, John Johnson. Is this something they need to get a permit from us? No, we don't you usually just, permit. Uh, no. don't. I think it's more of an year. informational, yep. informational thing. Yep. Great. So everybody yep. wants to go to a car show on July 21st? Please go. Yep. Please go. Yankee Candle. So it's a great show. We just we support it. Yep. Good. Uh, next thing, uh, Is Berkshire it? Gas Public Hearings. Uh, these are the DPU hearings. Uh, and uh -huh. I was wondering, Kip, since you are an actual gas user, mm -hmm. if you would just um, submit testimony or just go and speak because... Sure. DPU, I think I spoke last D, um, DPU is, is they're making an effort to come out here. 
So, so we should have some. We, we should have someone represent us. Where is it? Um, uh, July thirty first. I know that. But Greenfield Middle oh, School there's, usually. There's one I mean, that's what they did last time. It's July eleventh at Greenfield Middle School. Yep. I didn't see it. It's on page three. On what? Page three. On page three of the what I had given you. Oh, here document. it is. Yep. July eleventh at Greenfield Middle School, and then there's another one. July twenty third at Berkshire Community College. And those, uh, you know. Um, I mean, Kip, your gas user. So, if you feel like the gas rates are justified, or if you know it's above inflation, so. Um, well, in that aspect, I'm not a good. Cause my gas bill was fifteen dollars last month, so. Well. I know. Uh, you know. No, you, I, I I have no problem. I, I will definitely yeah, go. Yeah. Just through. all it you have is. to do is just. I, I, I think with the, the the you hate I hate to have this go by without us doing it. So thank no, you think, very much. I know. I, I have no problem, although. Right. I have to add people might not like it because I like the fact that gas comes to my house through a pipeline and not by a truck that burns fossil fuel, but I'll leave it at that. Okay. As long as you don't get into that. No, chance. I ain't getting into that, no. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, oh, next item. Okay, Is I will it? go to that. Thank you. Oh, you don't have to thank me. Next item, Deerfield Academies. Fiscal year team annual contribution, their second half payment received. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Deerfield Academy. Thank you, Deerfield Academy. Yes, thank you, Deerfield Academy. Um, they f sent us a check for $59,500 on behalf of Deerfield Academy. This is very generous. Thank you. Yep. Um. Board of Health comments? I just want to reiterate if people see um, someone out trapping. Uh, if the mosquitoes are just being trapped by DPH for us. And if there's anything, I'll let anybody know. I will let everyone know. Do we know. have a specific uh, locations? Uh, um, they're, right now they're using the same locations that um, VDCI picked um, behind the visitor center, down here somewhere by Frontier, and then Waitley visitor Road. Visitor center? Well, you know, well, right behind the headmaster's house, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, in okay. Old Deerfield. Okay. There's that swampy area. Okay. We had one out by um, uh, Mill, the Mill Village culvert, but it's redundant. So um, we used we moved it down to two. Of, there's now two down at Waitley. Do they the, do any by the Waitley center swamp. of town? Um, just just by frontier. Just by frontier. Yeah, okay. I mean we when we as a, a mosquito district get up and running, we can put them as, we can yeah, put them everywhere. Out. Yeah, and we're gonna actually map out more habitats but yep. this is free and why we're so transitioning so just, we can't really complain just a reminder um not that it's been a lot of rain but if you have pots out there or tires in your yard just tip them over and dump the water yep. out every once in a while yep. it doesn't have to be every day but just you know if you see it's kind of stagnant just flip it over it helps the last two years have been extremely dry and, and the west nile disease didn't really show up until the end of july but this is the first time um, we've been testing this early, and, but it's a little bit wetter. Yeah. So we it's might have more more hits. Stuff. We don't know what's going on yet. Okay. Uh, is there anyone from the public that would like to make a comment on any issues here in town? Public comment. No. Okay. I guess it's all oh, quiet. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Come on up. Please. Welcome. Just, just state um, your name and. I'm Pam Predmore, and I live at 36 Grave Street. And um, this may not be the appropriate time to ask, but I'd be interested in what you're talking about at Kelleher Drive about the culvert, mm -hmm. um, because currently there is a culvert in front of our house. Um, it's it's a it's a vernal I guess you'd say stream. It's not there all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it runs through our property. We own both sides, and it's never been clear to me what we're allowed to do or not supposed to do there. Mm -hmm. um, there are in fact trees growing up in it. Um, a former neighbor who unfortunately has since died, but who grew up on the street, told me that at one point the town used to come through and clear that. And they've not done that in quite a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't really been allowed as a town to do that since the early 80s, mm -hmm. I believe, is what 
um, people told me. Mm -hmm. We stopped maintenance in the 80s, early 80s, I think. Mm -hmm. And, so and that was a DEP regulation. And there, there was a meeting, well, we moved here 12 years ago, and shortly after we did move, there was a meeting here, and we came to it, but it still wasn't clear what we're allowed to do or not allowed to uh -huh. do. And the other piece of information is that it's my understanding that it's not a natural brook, okay. that it actually was created as a an agricultural um, like source a of water, kind of? and that it joins a natural, the, the brook that goes by the old fire station, that, right. that one, it joins that. So I just don't know what what we're allowed to do yeah. or we aren't supposed to do with it. I, so I, I'm not an expert on this, but you, you, you're allowed to mow right up and mow anything that you want. Uh, you can't cut down trees or things like that. Even though this run waterway might have been man-made even 10 years ago, anything that's there for two years, the DEP considers it protected area. Cool. So, you know, that it can run into a lot of different areas. Yeah, your best bet, Pam, is that if you want to actually do some work in the area is to get in touch with the Conservation Commission. They have a process called a request for determination of applicability, and they and you put down, it's basically an application, say you want to take down some trees or you wanted to do some maintenance, you would put down what you want to do, and they would come out and take a look at it and tell oh. you what you can do and how you can do it and in what you know, areas that you can disturb or not disturb. Okay. And, and, are, and, then, and then if there are guidelines, you can work in a wetland area, it, but it depends on, like you're saying, the source, um, the, the, if it's a perennial or if it's a, um, uh, you know, but depending on the type, the water body itself, mm -hmm. but they have maps and they can look at all of that stuff. And they, and they can tell if it's not um, an original water source. Right. They have map, DEP has all those maps. Yeah, so I've that would be the best very map. early maps and it's just, it's not on it at yeah. all. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and part of my concern is that some of what's growing up in it has gotten to be fairly large mm -hmm. trees. Right. Right. But they're, you know, in, in the side of the stream, and I can't, we've already had one come down yep. um, during a storm and, and uh, the town clearing up other um, tree damage on the street and they were kind enough to haul it away. Oh, nice. Probably because it was from that, that stream. But yep. we have two new families um, on the other side of the stream mm. who've purchased the two houses with small children. Yep. And it worries me to if think that if, the, if, a, if a tree falls down there, could they be injured? Mm -hmm. We don't don't have young kids, but it sounds like that'd be a great, So I think that, yeah, that may a good be avenue to start. a good and source. And then if there are um, conditions on what you want to do, they'll, they'll do, you'll do a notice of intent. There's, there's a process, basically. Okay. Um, but the Conservation Commission can guide you through that process. Great. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for your question. That's very helpful. Sure. Julie. Julie. Last Thursday on my way out of town, I noticed some DOT trucks over on the potential um, Dollar General lot. Mm -hmm. And um, that as someone who's opposed to the location of the Dollar General on that small lot with an oversized building, um, I just want to, um, I know you didn't make your comments tonight. I guess that will be the next time. Yes. Um, but I probably represent at least 30 other people at least that oppose that location. I myself feel that it's just an inappropriate size building for that lot. So thank you. For sharing that, would suggest that. Thanks, <laughs> Jul Sorry. Julie Cavaco. Great. Any other comment? Anyone else? No. Nope. Okay. Now, so upcoming meetings. We have a special select board meeting on June 25th at 5:30 p.m. And that's going to be primarily just to review the warrant at mm -hmm. that time. Okay. Mm -hmm joint public hearing for the select board and the CIPC regarding um, the FY19 capital improvement program at 6 o'clock and then special town meeting on June 25th at 7 p.m. I'm assuming it's going to be here? Yes. yes. Um, people need to come out for June 25th at 7 p.m., please. Really, if you are on the town sewer at all, you should come to this meeting. 
Um, we do have a quorum for that meeting, a quorum requirement of 35. 35. We need 35, 35 people, yeah. So we need, at least 30 so we need, we need our town. How can we do it? We can get a lot of people here because this is going to impact your sewer bill. So, you know, please come and listen. Mm -hmm. um, Very important. Our regular come meetings for the select board and board of health on June 27th, July 11th, July 25th, August 8th, August 22nd, and September 5th going forward. So. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you.